Welcome back, Stasa23 here, back again with some knife therapy. And uh, the knife I have in front of you was brought to me through our pass around group and thanks to We Knives uh, and who makes Civivi knives. And this knife is the Civivi Aquila. Comes in right around $68 on Blade HQ. Um, and this is part, Civivi is the budget line that uh, we branched into <clears throat> and I got mixed feelings about it but we're going to talk about this one and uh the $68 is is a little bit more than the the ones that the cheaper ones that that came out first and we're going to kind of talk about that too and what what my thoughts are on that uh let's get some quick specs out of the way you have a total length of 8.3 inches so it's a full-size EDC knife you have a blade length of three and a half inches you have a cutting edge of three and an eighth inches. You have a, um, whoa, oh, I'm sorry. You have a handle length of 4.85 inches. That's a pretty massive handle. Um, you have, let's get this closed up. You have a grip area. Oh, you have a grip area from here to here of four and three sixteenth inches. You have a handle thickness of 0.51, so just, just at the average uh, thickness. The width and with it closed is 1.56 inches. Your blade stock thickness is 3.15 millimeters. And the thickness behind the thinnest portion of the edge on my calipers read 18,000. So very nice, very nice and slicey. Um, real quick, the packaging is nice, especially for what you're paying. You get the, the wee box, I mean the Civivi box. And you also get a nice sleeping bag for them. Super, super cool. This is just made for one knife, like the wee, the wees are two knives and they're a little bit longer. But you get a nice polishing cloth, you get some, some reading info and a little plastic baggie. Very, very cool. You don't see many, uh, knives at this price point going all out. Let's dive into it. You have this classic drop point blade that has this nice two-tone finish on here. You have blacks on your, your grinds. You have um, satin flats. You have a completely sterile blade unless you look very, very closely. And you can see the designation of the blade steel, which is VG10. Um, you have a nice... Uh, long top swedge that gives you a nice uh, precise point for piercing. Uh, you have a uh, well executed deep hollow grind right here and I can show you how hollow it is with this flat edge that just happens to be card for my channel. And let's see, I don't know if I better show you all this with the light, but as you can see, it's hard to see. You can see that little hump in the middle where it's not touching. Just shows you that that's a hollow ground blade. Um, and you can feel it too. And you can feel that it's nice and thin behind the edge. This thing is a dream, dream to cut with. Uh, you also have a large sharpening tool, or if you have skinny fingers, you could choke up on there. Just be careful. I, I don't know if I feel comfortable unless I was doing light duty task. You do have a nice blade hole right there that's got a huge chamfer going on the whole entire thing. It's been coated in the inside. Nice and comfortable to use. Uh, you have a nice ramp right here coming up onto the spine for the thumb to land. And even with the uh, coating on here, that jimping is perfectly done. Nice, grippy, not overly grippy, but with that thumb ramp in combination with it, you get a nice nice lock in right there um let's close this guy up that thumb hole oops <laughs> that was my bad nice deployment with the thumb hole there you can spidey flick it you can slow roll it you can do just about anything you want you can do the little spidey drop thing with it you know you know how it goes and i come back to this flipper tab well done you have jumping on there uh you can light switch it it's decent with the light switch and then you can get that flat portion to push button and it comes out just a little bit faster. This guy, unlike the, the cheaper models, this one's riding on ceramic bearings. The other ones are just riding on stainless. Uh, to be honest, I can't really tell the difference between 
This Naja that's on stainless, that thing fires out hard, but that one's got a stronger detent, and that on ceramic. So, got a thwackier action on this guy, but it's got a, a bigger blade with momentum. <clears throat> um, your hardware is, let's see, T6 on the body screws and T6 on the clip screws. You have a uh, C for the Civivi logo on the pivot. It's almost completely flush. Uh, the countersink on there is almost completely flush. It is raised a little bit on this side, but nothing that's going to hurt the functionality of this knife or the ergos. Uh, speaking of, the ergos are outstanding. Outstanding. I knew the ergos were probably going to be pretty good because uh, this knife looks like a uh, a bigger version of their previous a Wii Nas Ignition model. It has the same blade shape. It's just it was a little bit smaller. And some people said they wish it was they wish they would do one bigger. And I guess this is the answer to that. But the way this swells out right here, and you got that deep trawl right there, it just melts in the hand and it locks in with this uh, ramp right there. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And the hammer grip is good as well. The reverse grip is good because you have this curvature right here with that, that raised gear pattern on the G10 backspacer. If you wanted to do your pinch grips, it's okay, but you do, uh, it is, is it is a little thinner right here because of that swedge so you can do it it's just not as comfortable you wouldn't want to be putting some pressure down on there um the g10 is a uh, very very mild traction on here um it almost feels i mean the we practic is about the same feeling it they look almost identical so if you have the practic you'll know that the feeling's almost the same. Also kind of feels like uh, the Tangram uh, traction, except the Tangram on this, the Santa Fe, is a little bit more traction than the Civivi. So very mild traction, which I don't mind at all. Um, <clears throat> you have uh, a 3D mill titanium pot clip, which is another upgrade from the cheaper models of the Civivis. They came with just a, a standard pocket, steel pocket clip. Um, this thing is tip up left or right handed only. So they, they give you those options at least for both sides. Awesome. Um, I talked about the 3D geared G10 backspacer. You have a ginormous lanyard for all you lanyard peeps out there. They taking care of you. Um, you don't have to worry about coming in contact with that blade when it's closed. Let's check out the inside. You have some nice internal milling, as you can see, on top and bottom. Excellent job there to reduce as much weight as possible. Speaking of weight, let's get a quick weight on this guy. Let me move some stuff out of the way. Let's see. 4.07 ounces. That is awesome. That's um, about an ounce an inch, and that's a big win in my book. So, always like to see that. Let's see how this guy looks in the pocket. My simulated pockets right here with your flat jean style pocket. This clip is excellent. It goes in and out perfectly. You do have a good bit sticking out. And if the, the bling right there doesn't do it for you, that's really not going to do it for you. But you definitely like how this sits because you can grab onto that portion of the clip without pushing pressure right there and pull it out very easily with your slanted pockets, like on some khakis, usually dress pants, you have that much sticking out. So about the same, just more of that section sticking out, but easy, easy to get out of the pocket. Excellent design pocket clip. Especially, it's, it's got enough thickness, it's not going to spring out very easily on you. Um, let's see, I think I talked about just about everything I wanted to talk about. We do a few size comparisons, and I'm going to talk about some of my nitpicks, complaints, gripes, you know. You know the story. Uh, let's go with its brother and the Sadivi Naja. Naja. These two are pretty close in size. The Naja looks like it might be a hair shorter than... Eh. They're, they're pretty comparable. If they're not exactly the same, they're, they're damn near close. Um, this one, though, I think these come in like $42 with the stainless bearings and the steel pocket clip and the 9CR18MOV. 
steel. This guy, like I said, is VG10. That's something I didn't talk about. Um, VG10 steel, um, even though I don't love it in Spydercos, just because it's a little softer than I like, um, they seem to do a good job on it, along with uh, Boker does a good job on their VG10. And um, Kaiser does a pretty good job on theirs as well. One thing I like about VG10 is it's very corrosion resistant and so easy to resharpen. Very good for an EDC steel when you have to touch it up back out in the field. I'd much rather uh, touch up this than say S30V and definitely I wouldn't want to have to touch up crew wear. You know, those steels are great, but um, depends on the application for me. Um, so definitely I think it's good to go there. Another size comparison is the Two Your Knives Bruiser. There you go. The Bruiser is a little bit bigger. Not by much though, pretty darn close. And we'll go with the Best Tech Knives Toucan. There you go, the Toucan, just a titch. Both of them look like they're just a titch longer in the blade. Um, the Toucan's very, very close. Go. The, these two are rocking D2 steel, and I think they're $52 and I think $45. Um, got the Cold Steel American Lawman. The Lawman looks like it's just a hair shorter than the Aquila. And one more last one the Buck, the SK Blade Works Buck Marksman. If you're looking for a good exclusive and and decent quality control, or pretty good quality control. Check out SK Blade Works. I've been pretty, I've been very satisfied with this guy. Um, those two are very close in size. The Quilla, just a hair bigger. Um, now we're gonna talk about a few of the complaints I have with this guy. First, start out. This guy's pretty handle heavy. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about. There you go, and it's that's sitting on the back side of that choil. You know, you'd want to see it balance right there. And, you know, when you have a long knife like this, it, the the balance point makes it feel a lot lighter in hand. So, um, there's my first little nitpick. None of, these, none of these nitpicks are hurting the functionality of this blade whatsoever. Just things that bother me. Um, lock bar tension is... Pretty strong. Um, there's not enough, you know. There's not enough meat to to put a relief in there, and you got a decent amount to be able to get your finger in there. You do have jimping. This one's not as bad as my, this. The Naja has got some pretty strong lock bar tension, and I, I'm guessing, and you know, this is only two samples of these knives. I'm guessing this one was dialed back just a little bit because you have these other uh, opening deployment methods. So they didn't want to make it to where you couldn't do, you couldn't use that hole because it was too strong. That's just my thoughts on it. Um, so it's not, it's not to where it's, it's hurting my finger, but it might after a while. Um, this guy, it, it started to hurt my fingers, but you do have to look at my hands though and keep that in mind. Um, let's see. Her. Okay, let's close this guy up. <clears throat> now, I'm not a lanyard guy, and, you know, I understand some people are, but I would have loved to see that lanyard, at least where the placement on that lanyard hole completely be removed because that makes this handle that much longer. They could have completely taken that out and took off, you know, another quarter of an inch. That's just, you know, whatever, nitpick. My OCD tendencies are going crazy there. Um, they could have taken that out and put in, you know, one of them little lanyard posts back here. That would have been awesome. Uh, I'm trying to see if I have any knives that have that done. Uh, not that I see. But that would have been cool to see. That's just my opinion. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, the finish on this clip, it just looks really out of place to me. You have this this satin finish on all the hardware here. You have this gold here. You have a satin finish here, black here, and then you have this gray clip. I don't know. It just, to me, it just, it looks like, um, I broke the, the clip that goes for this and I, I put, I slapped this guy on it. That's just my opinion. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think it would have looked nicer with just, you know, where's the, you know, just with the standard clip or something like that or a titanium one like that. Who knows? Who cares? <laughs> um, 
And we'll look at, you know, the gold liners. It's probably love it or hate it. Um, I don't really mind it. I think it looks pretty good with the black and gold Go Saints. Um, you know, but I know some people aren't going to like that blingy blingness to it. You know, I think the black and gold looks better than the orange and gold on the Naja. Uh, I will say that, um, this, whatever, however they're, they're doing this coating or whatever this is on here. I don't know the process they do it, but it is rather strong. You can kind of see it dulled out right there a little bit, but I took this to my buffer with some white compound and I tried to see, I just wanted to see how well it held up and I buffed the buffed and buffed and that's all I really got. You could see, you know, just a little bit of it missing, but it wasn't no easy task and, you know, you can remove anodization really quick by using the buffer. So that just shows you that that, that coating is pretty strong. Um, and let's see. So that's pretty much it on my, my nitpick scratch complaints. Um, and what do I think about the price point of this guy? You know, 68 bucks. I think, I think it's definitely in line with, uh, the market. I mean, you got, you know, you got your Kaisers. This is a Kaiser Splinter with VG10 and G10 stainless steel, uh, lock, line of lock with, uh, I think these are just steel bearings. You got ceramic bearings on here. You have just your regular clip here. You have a titanium clip here. So, I mean, if you like that stuff, you know, great. Um, but I don't think $68 is, is asking too much. I think this guy was around that same exact price, uh, maybe more. And let's see. The, the Best Tech Pebbles and VG10, pretty much the same, same setup. And this guy's, you know, in that same ballpark. So... I think it's priced accordingly from what the park market is going for at this time. Uh, now, do I think the upgrades were necessary? And I'm kind of torn there. Um, I, I, I've been using the 9CR on this guy uh, pretty extensively, and it's pretty close. I would, I'm, I would like to maybe I'll buy uh, maybe I'll buy one like this. One of the ones in VG10 so I can compare them, uh, head to head with each other to see how close they are. I only, I've only done a few tests and it was with this knife with some, uh, Spyderco VG10. So, uh, you, you have to make the decision whether, you know, you, you don't mind, uh, the non CR, the stainless clip and the stainless bearings. And or would you or do you rather the VG10 ceramic bearings and titanium pocket clip? Uh, I, I like this design a lot. I would love to see that go away. If if this was my knife, I probably would make it go away. Um, but I'd like to hear your thoughts down below. Uh, do you do you like the upgrades? Would you rather them just stick with the the nine CR? I think I think one of the problems was is. You know, people hear the, the, the CR, you know, like the 8CR, and that's what they think, that it's going to be just like 8CR. But, you know, you got to really go out and test your knives and see what they're capable of because, you know, you don't just need to listen to what, you know, somebody read off of a steel app. You know, that's why I love Cedric and Ada's test. That's why I'm going to give my, my buddy uh, Super, Steel, Steve, Super Steel Steve a shout out because he's also doing tests. Check him out. He's got a new YouTube channel. Um, definitely a good guy, and we we've, we've been doing a lot of talking, like him a lot, along with Nero Nas. He does testing as well, and all those are data points to help you make you know try to give you an idea. If you're not gonna do the test yourself, give you an idea what the knife may be capable of. But just like you know, Super Steel C said, you know, this is just one knife, and this knife. Uh, this exact knife that you get might not be anything close to the way this one was done as far as heat treat and all that kind of stuff. So now I'm just rambling along. Uh, I like the knife. It functions well. Um, I may pick one up depending, you know, I got to be picking now. I got my third grandbaby that just arrived. So that's awesome. So, all right, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Share with all your friends and family and your social networks. If you like my videos in general, hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Hit that bell notification button so you don't miss any, any of the content that comes out and any of the giveaways that we do on this channel. Hope everybody's having an absolutely wonderful day, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.